Hey everyone, today we're going to look at lesson 24, explain relationship between events, objects, and processes. So here are the objectives from ATI. First, you need to be able to compare the magnitudes, for example, size of events, objects, and processes. Determine the causal relationship between events as the cause and effect relationship. A good example is smoking and high blood pressure. Smoking is likely to cause high blood pressure, which may lead to cardiovascular diseases. Next is the sequence event or process. Um, so basically, TEAS wants you to um, be able to identify the correct sequence of a series of events. If they give you, you know, different steps, then you need to know what happens first, what happens next, and what happens last. So this lesson overlaps with the previous two lessons. So a lot of the information can actually be found in the previous lessons. Now today, I'm just going to go over some of the new information uh, that does not overlap with any previous lessons. So this is going to be kind of a short lesson. The first topic in this lesson is to compare magnitude. And this is basically just to kind of find the appropriate measuring units, right, for volume, length, and mass. So we talk about this in lesson 22, um, the third topic. So before you get really good at that, you definitely need to have an idea of how big the units are. For example, when you measure a length, you need to know how big a millimeter is, a centimeter is, and a meter is. Um, get a meter stick and look at the different units. And once you are familiar with the, how big those units are, you know, what they look like, then uh, when you see a question, you should be able to identify the appropriate measuring unit. Number two, determine causal relationship and sequence. Uh, so again, this is basically just cause and effect, right? Oh, that's not case, it's cause. I'm missing a U there cause and effect relationship. So cause would be the independent variable. That's the variable you're testing, right? Effect is seen in the dependent variable, which is what you measure. So let's uh, go back to that smoking and high blood pressure example. So cause would be smoking and the effect would be high blood pressure. And blood pressure would be the dependent variable, right? Something that you measure. So you're going to have probably a group of non-smokers and a group of smokers, and you're going to measure their blood pressure. Sequence. So you're going to choose the correct order for, for a series of events or steps. I have some examples here. So in this example, you have four different events happening. And you need to know the correct order or the correct sequence for these events. This is about insulin and glucose level. Now we know that insulin regulates glucose level in the blood. So the trigger for insulin release is a high glucose level in the blood. This is going to be number one in this series of events. Glucose level in blood rises. And this is going to trigger number two, right? This is going to promote the pancreas to release insulin. And then the insulin gets into the bloodstream, gets to the tissues and the cells, and insulin will work on individual cells. It's going to allow the cell to take in glucose. Right? So that's a step number three. And the outcome, the result of all these steps are going to be glucose level in blood drops, right? Because glucose is taken into the cells. So the level in blood will drop back to the normal level. So that's the correct sequence for insulin regulation of blood level of glucose. Okay, and that's pretty much it for this lesson. It's super short because most of the information has been covered previously. So the only, only new topic is uh, different events in the correct sequence. Hey everyone, this is the very last lesson in our TEAS science review. So we're almost there. Today we're gonna look at how to analyze the design of scientific investigations. These are objectives from ATI. 
So you should be able to identify a relevant hypothesis based on a given investigation. So basically, they will give you a scenario with a research question, and you need to come up with the appropriate hypothesis. Next, determine the strengths and the weaknesses of a scientific investigation. So this is kind of similar to what we covered before. Critique, right, a scientific investigation. Maybe there is a bias. Maybe the sample size is too small. Maybe there's no uh, appropriate control. Next is about the different variables we have talked about before. So there are independent dependent and controlled variables, right? Last, you need to be able to determine whether a hypothesis is supported by evidence within a case study. So again, you will be given a, a scenario where there's data, there's evidence, and you can draw a conclusion whether the hypothesis is supported by the data from the study. So what is a hypothesis? A hypothesis is a proposed explanation for a phenomenon, right? a, a guess for why something happens. So a hypothesis is very important in scientific investigation. Right? Before you start a study, you need to come up with a hypothesis. And then you conduct the study to test the hypothesis. There are a few hypothesis examples uh, over here. So for example, um, you observe exercise and cardiovascular health, and maybe you come up with this hypothesis, regular exercise will improve heart health. Or maybe you are interested in air quality and human health. So maybe you notice that sometimes we will have a lot of particulates in the air, for instance, from wildfires, right, or from industrial activities. So you may come up with with the hypothesis, levels of particulates in the air will increase the incidence of the regulatory diseases. These are examples of some of the hypotheses that you may form right, based on uh, what you observe. And then you can conduct studies to test these hypotheses. The second topic in this chapter, based on the study menu, is a variables and experimental design. So we have covered this previously in lesson 23. We talk about what these variables are and how to design a good experiment. So you can go back to lesson 23 and review these if needed. But next, we're gonna look at analyzing data and drawing conclusions. The conclusions are based on the data, right? On the evidence you obtain from the experiments. And then based on the data, you draw conclusions and you can decide whether the hypothesis is supported or rejected by the experimental results. Now for this part, you have to get some practice before you can get better because this is not something that we you know, teach a lot, say in courses like anatomy and physiology, which a lot of people put a lot of uh, emphasis on. So this might be something that you are not super familiar with. So just, you know, get some questions from the internet if you can find them and then just kind of practice, uh, look at some data and then come up with, with your own conclusions and make sure you also think about the experimental design and data reliability, right? See if you can find any, you know, uh, weaknesses in terms of these uh, aspects of the study. I come up with, with the practice problem. So there is a group of researchers who are studying the effect of a plant-derived compound. Right? So this is the keyword. They're looking at the effect of a compound. And the thing that they want to study is to see if there's any relationship between the compound and weight loss. They have conducted a similar study before in rats, and they observed significant weight loss in male rats ingested the compound. So now they are doing a second study. They recruited two groups of male subjects, human subjects, who are overweight, and they're in their age group of 40 to 50. And these subjects have a similar lifestyles. The five subjects in group A received the starch pills without the actual compound, and the other five subjects in group 
B, receive the pills containing the compound. So the table below shows the data from the experiment. Which of the following is the hypothesis formed by the researchers in this study? So now we need to go back to the question, right? I'm gonna go over some of the key information you should use to figure out hypothesis. They came up with this research question and hypothesis based on what they have observed, right? Based on previous experience. So what have they seen? They have done a similar study, but it was in rats, right? And then they observed weight loss in male rats who ingested the compound, right? who were given the compound. So that will be the key information for you to derive the hypothesis. So the hypothesis would be the compound will have a similar effect in humans, right? So let's figure out which one is the correct hypothesis. A states that the compound will help females lose weight. That female part is not correct, right? Because the previous study was based on male rats. So now the researchers are doing an experiment on male human subjects only. So we, we will not know anything about females. Statement B, the compound will help rats lose weight. This is not correct either because the current study is about human subjects, right? Specifically males. The part about rats has already been supported by a previous study. So now the researchers have moved on to human trials. Statement C, the exercise without the compound will help humans lose weight. We know that exercise um, can help people lose weight, but that's not what the study is about, right? They the, this study focuses on the plant-derived compound. So they didn't mention exercise. So this is not about exercise. Now, exercise can still be one of the control variables, right? Because you might want to keep the access level um, about the same between the different groups. Statement D, the compound will help males lose weight, right? So that's the correct hypothesis. Number two, which variable is the dependent variable? Dependent variable is what you measure. In this case, the independent variable is the compound, right? Or more specifically, the absence or presence of the compound, right? Whether the human subjects ingest or do not ingest this compound. That's the independent variable. The dependent variable is what you measure, right? In terms of results. So that will be weight loss. All right, so B is the correct answer. Number three, which of the following factors should be controlled in this study? Any confounding factors that could lead to weight loss should be controlled, should be kept similar among the different groups. Ingestion of the compound, no, that is the dependent variable. Amount of exercise, yes, we probably should make that very similar across the different groups. The body height, now the height and weight, they don't have any definitive relationship. So height has nothing to do with weight. So C is not correct. Last, the views on um, plant-based food. food. Um, that's also unrelated, right? Whatever view you have on plant-based food, probably will not affect your weight loss in this particular study. Number four, what can you conclude from the data? So now let's look at the different statements. Statement A, there was increasing weight reduction over time in both groups within three months. That's not true, right? We saw increasing weight reduction over time for group B only. Remember for group A, after one month, after three months, it's the same number, right? Same amount of weight loss. Statement B, subjects in group B lost more weight than subjects in group A, and the difference became more evident over time. It's correct. Right? If you go back to the data, you see this is two versus um, 0 0.5, 
and this is five versus through point, uh, 1.5. So the difference is growing, right? And even here, eight versus 1.5. So uh, again, after three months, uh, the difference was the greatest. C, subjects taking the compound will continue to lose. There's a typo there. Lose weight after six months. That's not a conclusion that you can draw from the current data because the current data only showed what happens three months, right? So we will not know what happens after three months. So the data does not tell us whether the weight loss would continue after three months. Last statement, subjects in group A did not show weight do not show increasing weight loss between one week and one month since the experiment began. The weight loss for group A subjects was 0 0.5 kilograms in week one, right? That's week one. And at the end of the first month and third month, it's so the weight loss actually increased between one week and one month, right? It changes from 0 0.5 to 1.5. So I actually increased. But if I change this to between one month and three months, that will be correct because the number stayed the same. It did not change. D is not correct. It did show some increase in weight loss between one week and one month. Number five, even though the subjects from group B seem to lose more weight over time, which one of the following factors in the experiment may likely confound the results and make the conclusion less convincing? I'm gonna go backwards. So let's look at D, duration of the study. Um, the duration is good, right? They looked at the weight loss in three months and they checked periodically after one week, after one month, after three months. And the duration of the study is um, usually arbitrary based on what you're studying, right? Like the specific topic. So I don't think there's anything wrong with the duration. The extrapolation between two different species when forming the hypothesis. Now, there's nothing wrong with that either, right? A lot of the observations um, are done in animals first. And then we will, you know, try similar things in humans to see if we get the same facts. So C is okay. B, qualifications of the researchers. Now, the, the information given to you does not, does not say anything about the qualifications of the researchers, right? So they're probably fine. A, number of subjects per group. And that's the correct answer. Because right now, there are only five subjects in each group. And that's a very small sample size for a study like this. And you can't just say um, this chemical, this compound can help you lose weight. And our data is based on five subjects per group and a total of 10 subjects, right? That's a very, very small, small number for uh, either animal studies or human studies. So A is the correct answer. All right, guys, so we are done completely with the TEAS science review. Hopefully this had a series of a review videos help you get ready for taking on T's the science section. Um, best of luck to everyone. Let me know if you have any questions.